On today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny, we test our self-control and put in a home concession area. How to take grandma's beat up coffee tables and give them some new life. Also, ideas for making a paneled loft area quite a home getaway. Not the wash basin type. We'll give you some ideas on what it can become today. Can these outdoor lights shine again? Also, turning a cluttered kitchen into a functional and attractive workspace. We'll give you some tips. Plus, no more candy for the antique machine. But what can we do with it today? All those and more today on Junkin' with Jenny. Junkin' with Jenny, episode 13. Okay. I believe is what we are up to. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of the program. Lots of uh, fun stuff that we're going to be talking about this week. And this week, this is something we've been kind of joking about doing uh, for quite a while because we, <laughs> we've we just been drinking on every episode because... We're going to do it. So. Because, while well, we enjoy drinking yeah. and, and, and drinking wine when we're talking about our home improvement stuff. It helps us come up with a lot of ideas. I think there's a lot of ideas that we've kind of been like on the fence of and it's like, after a bottle of wine, yes, let's do it. These are the creative juices. <laughs> so we now have creative juices uh, as a wine of the week every week here on Junkin' with Jenny or as often as we can. Um, I've lined up uh, several of them and our first one that's our official, uh, I guess, uh, creative juice of the week mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is this one right here. And this is a great one. It's uh, Virginia Dare. Uh, wine and this is uh, from a Francis Ford Coppola it's from their brand and it's it's really a neat one and it, it, I you know how so many things just kind of fall in place with our shows yeah as far as yeah. like our, our, our ghost show there's a lot of things that happen where it's like well that's weird this theme kind of just came together themes appear on mm -hmm. their own yes the first winery that I reached out to um, or brand that I reached out to was them and I said hey you know we have this show here's our, our viewership stats we enjoy drinking wine during the show would you like some exposure for, for your brand uh, in exchange for some wine and uh, they were like yeah that, that's great and, and we love what you're doing with reclaimed stuff because we have a brand of wine that's all about kind of like being reclaimed. Yes. And it's a really neat story. This this brand of wine, this Virginia Dare, was actually one of the most popular brands of wine in the United States pre-Prohibition. Mm -hmm. Prohibition kicked in, it kind of went away. And then uh, after that, that time, it, it came back uh, for a good period of time and then kind of fell in hard times and then again, kind of went away. But uh, it has been brought back to life, you know, just like how we kind of take objects and things and, and bring those back to life. Um, that's what they've done with this. Yeah. And it's really neat. And even the bottles are, are very reminiscent of, of a different place in time. There's, there's etching on these bottles and um, it's good stuff. So on today's episode, we're going to be enjoying these ones, the uh, uh, Virginia Dare, they have the Chardonnay. And this one over here, we have the uh, Pinot Noir. And uh, we're going to probably drink the whole bottle of both of them <laughs> while we're on camera I don't today. know about that. It's going to be some crazy, crazy design ideas. It may be the, the best last... episode ever if that happens. Yeah. But... But I, I do have to say, the Chardonnay... It's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I just... We open it up right before the show, and it's like, well, let's just try it before we go on the air mm -hmm. and loosen ourselves up before we go <laughs> on. And it is so good. <laughs> We like a good buttery Chardonnay, and this hits it on the head, and yeah. I just, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's you know, the holidays are coming up and all that. If you want one that will hit it out of the park, this is one that will do mm -hmm. it. Buttery, rich, flavorful. Um, you know, there's, you can taste kind of the oak in there as well, but it's, it's just a good balance of everything. It's one that um, your wine drinkers, your wine connoisseurs will love, and just the average person doesn't. Drink much wine. Right. Uh, will, I think, also really get a kick out of this. So, And just the, the history behind it is so neat. It is neat. And I'm trying to figure out something really cool to do with these bottles. Because I don't know if you can see it, but you said it was etching. But it's yeah. actually like yeah, I mean, it's an more than emblem that. that's raised yeah. on there. And you don't see that on bottles anymore. So I'm really trying to come up with something really cool to use some of these bottles on. Yeah, I mean, there's there's something there. So they'll probably be on a future episode yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> of us re redoing something with the bottle. 
So um, that's our wine sponsor today, uh, Virginia Dare. Look forward at uh, your local uh, wine store, liquor store. Um, it's good stuff. We'll talk about the Pinot a little bit later in the show. Um, so lots of, of neat stuff here uh, to, uh, to talk about. We uh, wrapped up a, uh, an interesting project. Yeah. Or a good portion of the interesting project that yeah. we've been working on. It's done. Yeah, it, it's been this uh, cornucopia of rooms essentially and we've talked about that yeah. on the show it, it basically took one large mm -hmm. full-size room the size of the the footprint of our house it was just yeah. all open in the basement and yeah. we divided it up some and uh we finally finished the last room and the last room is i mean it, it could have been a throwaway it could have been really a well it's kind of a wide hallway or or you could have put a desk there and called it like a homework station yeah. i mean there was a number of things it's big enough to do something with yeah. but we knew exactly what to do with it it led to a room and we have not done an episode on this other room we should do it sometime to talk about what we did with it okay um it leads to what, when we bought the house, was just a cold, dank cement floor, brick wall. One of the wall wasn't even brick. It was like dirt was coming through part of it. And it wasn't real brick. It's, yeah. it's stamped concrete. Yeah. The foundation was sure. stamped to look like brick. So it wasn't even brick. But it was a nice elongated room. Great for like a workshop or something. Uh -huh. Um, but we are kind of already had our work tools in a different area, like in the garage and another little uh, inlet. And we thought this would be a great place to make a movie room mm -hmm. and and like literally a home theater. And it's not hard to do. You know, you can get a, a projector mm -hmm. for a realistic amount of money today and screens are not hard. You can make it yourself or you can buy one and put it up and we just bought or one. Or paint it like paint we it. talked yeah. about. And so we got to put together really economically. We'll, we'll talk about that in a future episode, but it leads to that. It leads to our movie room. And what typically leads to a theater? And we have two little kids, and this is where we kind of got the idea of, oh my God, if we had this in our house when we were children. We would, yeah, we would have had all kinds of health problems by now. <laughs> <laughs> to say it nicely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and luckily, our children are very smart about candy right. and such, but we created literally a theater concession room. Yeah. A concession stand. And we got one of those... Um, uh, the the theater movie theater kind of you know tall popcorn machines on the cart yeah. and everything and that's been sitting in the actual movie room for a while and that was your father's day gift yeah. this year yeah and we thought well what if we like put it behind a concession stand and then we got thinking about a concession stand well what does that take mm -hmm. surprisingly more than you would think you can't just jump on uh, Amazon well you can jump on Amazon and buy one you can but there's there's a lot of hoops to jump through because they don't normally deliver these to residential addresses <laughs> so it takes some special shipping and all of that but we did uh, do that we found one at a reasonable price uh, it is funny because after we found it and bought it we found, we found several at antique stores the perfect one and we had looked and yeah. looked because of course you know doing what we do we love yeah. claimed and we wanted something maybe yeah. old that we could have used and we couldn't find anything. We, you know, scoured Craigslist, looked at antique stores. Nothing was out there. The day we had set ours up, we went to an antique store and there was like two of them in there. It was an antique cigar case that yeah. would have been perfect for this. Yeah, it, it would have been. And had, had we been able to get that to reclaim it, we totally would have. But we had to kind of go new with this one. But look for a reclaimed one first if you do this project. Yes, if you can. So basically what we did, I'll pull the picture up here. And by the way, you can see all this if you're listening to the podcast. Um, you can watch the podcast, the video version, at junkinwithjenny.com and see images from this podcast and everything we're talking about. Um, what we did here, and here's the image, um, is we got the uh, the candy case, and it's just a modern candy case. Um, and we, we went to Sam's Club, and, and the kids thought it was like either mom and dad have gone crazy, uh, or it's Christmas or Halloween and Easter all mixed into one. We'll be the coolest parents for a couple months, and yeah. then it'll wear off. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of candy here, and I'm, I was looking at the expiration dates going, can we eat all this candy by the expiration date? You and I can. The girls are so good. They just don't care for candy as much as we do. And, you know, the idea to a little kid of having all this candy in front yeah. of them, they're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. But really yeah. and truly, we've got two little girls, or probably the only two little girls that you and I know, that still have candy not from Halloween that just passed, but from Halloween a year yeah. ago because they just they just don't overdo it. They like it. 
But they don't over it. It's like, I'll have one piece. And I'm so and happy I'm about yeah. that. That's such a good thing for yeah. them. I want them to keep that trait, but... Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how they do it, but they do it. But, so I wasn't really worried. And I said, you know, if I need to put a lock on it, I'll put a lock on it. But I have not needed to yet. Um, but anyway, we got the candy case in there. And we just wanted to create kind of that feel of going into a theater and, and getting your snack before you go in. And, mm -hmm. and this is like movie theater of... of, of years gone by i mean yeah. a lot of theaters now have very crazy mega um uh concession stands right now. but i remember um or they bring it to you or they bring it to you exactly yeah um but this is it, what to me it's reminiscent of like the cinema one and two that was in my mall mm -hmm. when i was a kid and it was just a small little concession stand i think we actually have more candy than my theater did. <laughs> um but you know, it's a small, basic little popcorn machine. That's kind of just how it worked out. And I loved it. It was neat. It was fun. And that's, you know, that's what we did. And uh, that's that's how we made it. But behind there, behind the, the stand, is really where a lot of the character comes into the room. And that's really what we're going to talk about here with this room. You did a plank wall. Aren't you happy? I didn't say... You said, I you didn't said say it right. Shiplap. You said plank wall. There's a difference. There is. And this is a plank wall that Jenny put together just to really accent that thing. Um, other than just keeping it drywall um, or painting. Mm -hmm. um, and why don't you talk about that a little bit and how you did that? Uh, it's basically random boards that we had left over from all the projects that we do. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to spend a lot of money if you've got boards lying around. If not, and you, you don't have boards, go check out the clearance bin at your local big box store. They will have boards that are the leftovers that people didn't want after they had their piece cut and they're you know pennies on the dollar mm -hmm. just get a whole bunch of random ones and then um i used a variation of stains that we had some i just left in their natural state and didn't stain them at all and then some i painted and then wiped it off just get really as random as you can and then it's like a puzzle and you just start sticking them up um, and none of them are very heavy so i wasn't too concerned about studs if i found a stud great if not you know, just try and make sure that it's not going to, you know, fall off the wall. But the thing with this, I wanted that random look and I wanted a layered look. So I basically did a, a first layer, but I then went back along the edges and you, it's really hard to see from some of the pictures, but some of those boards are actually overlapping on top of other boards. And it's, yeah, that's a great pick to show that. It, it's just randomness and um, just try and get you know your colors kind of sp spread throughout and everything and I actually just kind of just did this on a whim I just set aside some time thought I'm gonna work on the plank wall today and I wasn't real sure what I was going for but this is how it ended up and I'm very happy with it. I think it's my favorite plank wall that we've done it's my favorite one okay it's it's really neat it's it, it's it's one of those plank walls where it's reminiscent of some of the 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 like the the bars, the restaurants, and stuff that we've seen them mm -hmm. at, and that I've wanted to have done. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm really really happy with it, and I like the the snacks sign. That's just letters you found at and Michaels. Yeah, yeah. Or you can even get them at Target or Walmart. They have the letters now, and you might sure. have to paint them. But these were, you know, mm -hmm. I had a coupon, so I went to Michaels and I got them, and they were already pre primed, and I just left them as is and just mm -hmm. put it up there. And then in addition to this, so we have the, uh, as you can see on the screen here, if you're, you're watching in the video version, candy stand, the popcorn machine, and then there's another candy machine that we bought. I think we got that at Sam's Club years ago. And that's healthy snacks for yeah. me, like wasabi peas and yeah. almonds and stuff like that. And it's that just I like a little turn uh, deal. Um, we didn't even buy it for this project. We just kind of had it mm -hmm. uh, for years and just thought this fits here. But you made a neat little backsplash or a backstand uh, for this thing, a little bit of storage in it. Um, so you can actually kind of store some of the extras, some of the, you know, the the containers maybe that right. you use. The or, popcorn supplies yeah. or the extras to refill. Um, and, and it's real simple. It was just basically a wall cabinet because I didn't want the depth of a base cabinet. Mm -hmm. Base cabinets are twice as wide as wall cabinets are. So I just got the wall cabinet. So it's 12 inches deep. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one had the double doors. It's a 30 inch wide. And I put furniture feet on it and I put a piece of plywood um, with a little bit of an overhang to kind of give a countertop. And then I used a product to um, 
kind of age it and you really can't tell from the pictures because it just didn't turn as gray as I thought it would but mm -hmm. there's a, a product out there it's by Verathane and it just is supposed to bring out the natural age and make wood look like it's been aging on a barn or you know in the sun for years and I used it on that and um, then put knobs on it and called it good and it was you know, done in an hour. And you had also used that on another wood product recently that we'll talk about probably in a future episode, mm -hmm. but it, it, it does seem from what you've learned, it, it takes differently to different yes, woods, uh, this, as any stain or anything would. This cabinet's oak mm -hmm. and um, it just didn't seem to get as gray of a tone as I wanted as it did on some of the lighter woods. Mm -hmm. Like I used it on a piece of butcher block that was raw that you know, was was lighter wood, yeah. and then I've used it on pine, and that's a lighter wood, and it just really seemed to work a lot better on that. And it turned out good Yeah. on those, and this one, we're kind of like, well, it, it, I get it, but we may end up doing a little painting on it. Yeah, at, I think it's gonna be painted day. within the next couple of months or so. Sure. But still, it's a neat product. There, are, there is places and yeah. in, in, in times for it with the right I have really wood. wish I had had it when I was doing the plank wall, because to achieve the gray look that I got, I mm -hmm. had to use paint, rub it on and wipe it off, whereas this would have been a once and done product that would have given me a really unique tone on each piece of wood. Sure. So it's a great product. I'm not knocking it. It's just not exactly what I had hoped for for that cabinet. It's not one uh, one product will fit all wood. No, no. It doesn't respect all wood. Then okay. respect the wood. Gotta respect the wood. Five people caught that. Curb your enthusiasm. It's not a sexual reference. I just, Are I, you I, nervous? I, need, <laughs> I should probably clear all of that up, you know, just just as yeah. like, oh my God, he's saying things to Jenny that are inappropriate. Um, but no, I'm not. Um, okay, so there you go. I, I love it. There's a lot of really neat things with this uh, with this setup. If you have any questions about it, you can always mm -hmm. email us through our website, jackinwithjenny.com. Yeah. And if you have a space, a place, an item, an object that you want uh, some advice on, submit it to us at junkinwithjenny.com. We may use it in a future episode of the program. Give you some advice, some insights, some thoughts uh, and feedback on what you can possibly do with it. Okay, next object uh, that is up for uh, for discussion here on uh, today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. It's Grandma's Coffee Tables. Ta-da! And look at these buttes. It's a butte, Clark. It is a butte. These are your octagon-shaped... They're not coffee tables. They're more like end tables. They're really. end tables, yeah. But they're they're wide. They're big end tables. They got the door on the front. Um, they kind of got the old, what would you call this, mahogany type style wood, if you would. It, wood, if you would. It, it, it's, I think, stained to look like stained mahogany. mahogany. I'm sure it's not real mahogany. I don't know what it is, yeah. but the way it's aged, I would venture to say it's real wood. It's not like yeah. a veneer that's... Been it's, on there. It is sandable wood without it is. without you know going to the veneer and it's like oh god there's nothing here but a uh, particle board of some sort. Um, and these are older. These are probably I would guess probably 60s or 70s originally. Mm -hmm. um, as far as so they're probably built really well, solid pieces of furniture, and and, and pieces like this I like I like these a lot because. I mean, they're, they're from a different place in time. You don't necessarily see things like this in the stores, but they're built well. They are. And you may not like necessarily the style uh, or the color, really, or the uh, the hardware on it. But the thing is, these are all things you can fix mm -hmm. very, very easily. And you know, quite honestly, that's something I didn't really realize until I think I met you or how easy... <laughs> It is to to fix some of these things up. I mean, it takes a little, you know, elbow grease. To, but it's to, so satisfying. It is, and and to take something like this, this is a very easy find on Craigslist, where you could probably find somebody some of these like either in the free section or, you know, ten twenty bucks for the pair. Right. And and there you go. They're not in the greatest condition, but. Um, the worst things, I mean, unless they are just roached out and have, you know, mildew or something like that, um, you know, worst case scenario in something like this, uh, as far as functionality goes, you may need to replace the hinge on the door or something. Sure. Which is a $3 fix. Right. And a screwdriver. Um, you may need to change up the, 
the hardware, which I'd probably do regardless. That's another mm -hmm. five to ten dollar fix with a screwdriver. But obviously, the overall look is is really kind of what you're going for. But as far as the functionality, you, you open this thing up and go, oh, it's really rickety. It's like no. The it's door, not. that can be fixed easily, yeah. unless the actual whole structure is rickety. This is a reclaimable item. This is probably one of the last generations where they made furniture to last. Yeah. Because we're talking about 70s, maybe 80s on mm -hmm. these coffee tables. And after that, people's tastes have gotten to where they change so fast, people just rarely buy furniture meant to last for decades anymore. But if you know what to look for and you can find a piece, you can make it really cute. So what I would suggest on these, because they are real wood, I would actually sand down the tops and get it back to the bare wood and then restain it to where it's just whatever color you're going to want. Um, the sides I would paint. Um, so I personally would go with a dark stain, like mm -hmm. a you know dark walnut or special walnut is a couple of popular stains right now that I really like. Special walnut is what it's called. Special walnut. Not unspecial walnut. Or Not unspecial walnut or stupid walnut. Stupid walnut. We don't so care about walnut. if you sand it down, rejected walnut. Rejected walnut. That's a stain. Um, <laughs> go ahead and sand it down. Stain it and then, you know, polyurethane or polycrylic um, to coat it really good. And then the, the sides, what I would do personally, if I were to put these in my home, mm -hmm. is I would paint them maybe a white or an off-white and do a glaze because they've got these great inlaid, almost cabinet quality door panels that, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm positive they go all the way around exactly the same. And I would do a glaze to kind of bring out that detail, but mm -hmm. it's going to give it more of a kind of, you know, almost farmhousey kind of look with the dark top and the white sides. Sure. But it's gonna fit just about any decor. Yeah. Now, if you didn't want to do the stain on the top, you could easily just paint the whole thing white, mm -hmm. make sure you do a clear coat on top just to, you know, sure. prevent rings and stuff from setting glasses down or, you know, age, but I would definitely paint them and use them again. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't do anything crazy as far as deconstructing and putting putting them together a different way. Um, I almost like them side by side as a coffee table because they look like they're kind of low. They're not as tall as what you would typically see an mm -hmm. end table be. End tables are a little bit taller. They should be about the height of the arm of the sure. sofa or the chair. but. I almost like them side by side as a coffee table. I like that too. I think that's a neat idea to, to kind of go on the coffee table route with them. Mm -hmm. um, the I would maybe consider doing like a glass overlay okay. on there to kind of make it more even just for setting things down because I could see myself in the inlet there uh, thinking, oh, it's part of the coffee table and then uh, dropping something right on the ground. Uh, but if you have the glass overlay, sure, you go. it's a full coffee table. Um, I, I, I like what you're talking about with the paint. That's totally, I think, a good option. Um, I think I, I like, I like wood. I like, I like using what exists. And I'm not trying to sound, you know, like a teenager making wood jokes. But, um, but I, I, I do enjoy. I just like the look of it. I like the. Um, just the, the, the grain of, of the wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're, you're making it sound worse. I'm trying to use no, words that are not going to sound. I'm trying to The not. warmth of it, the firmness of the wood. The, uh... I wasn't even going there. I'm trying to... So it's like, like grain and things that aren't going to go down that road. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, I... Uh, your wood. <laughs> I, I get what wine. you're saying. Guys tend to gravitate towards not so much the painted wood look. But they, I do like a lot of the paint looks now. Now that yeah. we've done them, I really do like them. Um, if it were just me uh, picking something, I would probably go with a darker stain on top. Again, you sand the whole thing down. Get out the electric sander. Just sand it. Get as much as you can done with the electric sander. And you're, there's going to be all these little areas and crevices you can't get in there with there. At the end of that, you get one of the uh, the the sanding uh, sponges. Type. Sanding blocks. Yeah, sanding mm -hmm. blocks. And then finish the rest out. Mm -hmm. Take some time put on the podcast and listen and then just, <laughs> listen to us that's what i do when i when i'm doing projects i always listen to podcasts um so that, that's what i would do i would do a, a darker probably stain on the top mm -hmm. uh and then probably a complementary but lighter stain on the bottom not dramatically different okay. not you know like white and black different but something 
in the family, but not so close where you're like, is that a different stain? But something a little bit lighter. To where it looks like it's on purpose. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, on the uh, the bottom edge of this thing. Change your hardware out, of course. I think that, that could be a really, uh, you know, you could do something really fun with that. I like the hardware. I think I would just take yeah. the hardware off and spray it. The hardware on there, I'm trying to see what we're, we're looking at here. It's just kind of funky. It's not like something you see now. So yeah. that's why I It is older. I like You're it. right. Yeah. I, I don't know if I like those. I, I would probably change it out with something a yeah. little more that I like. And not necessarily modern by any means, but just probably I would, I would probably change that out. But it's hard to tell in this picture what exactly that looks like up close. Um, but that's that's pretty much what I would do. I, I would maybe even consider uh, a stain variation on the inner panel of the doors as well. Okay. Where you kind of do an outer panel. I could see that. Stain. And you do a little, it'll take more work, more taping off. Sure. But I think you could really end up with some really funky, neat, uh, uh, you know, end tables here. Or, or a, uh, a coffee table if you want to go down there, that route. Um, I think either way it could work really good. Yeah. It's a cool piece. Thank you for uh, for submitting those to us here on the show. Uh, let's go to our next item. This is going to be ideas for making a paneled loft a uh, you know a little bit something else. Let me pull up here as a full screen. There we go. Uh, and you know what? I think this is more wallpaper than it is panel. From what I can tell. No, it's... Is that panel? It's panel. Is it panel? Because you can see the shadows of the ridges there. Okay, that is ridge. Okay. It's a little bit too deep to be embossed wallpaper. I was looking at it earlier. I'm like, is that wallpaper? Is that panel that we're looking at here? But either way, it looks like something out of the Amityville Horror. If they had like a nice little eye window at the end of that uh, hall there. It so would be perfect. What this is, this is your classic attic room that's been turned into a room. So yeah. it's got the angled ceilings that go up to a flat ceiling mm -hmm. where, you know, you can't stand up straight in the whole room, but you can in the middle. These are great spaces. These are bonus rooms. Um, you know, there are so many things you can do with this. Anywhere from turning it into a home office to turning it into a movie room which is what i think i might do with this one uh because there's really not a lot you know going for it as far as space i think i would just tiny screen though well but i would cover up that window block out the light and i would turn that into a movie room it's more movie room than i bet that house already has so sure i would do that with it uh you can either paint the paneling dark or take it down and uh, do the sheetrock it looks like the paneling's in good shape so i would just consider painting it. where does the movie screen go over the window to block the window okay so window's kind of dead then yeah if you're going to make it a movie room because like you a need pull it to down dark. screen essentially you would mm -hmm. you would attach it uh at the top of at the, the top window. okay and yeah do a pull down and then the thing is, with that, is you can raise it up, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be a movie room. It can be multi-purpose. Sure. So you you know you almost have that as a you know option to block out the mm -hmm. light, or you can raise it up and and let the light come sure. in. Um, you know, they're a great little guest room space. You can put built-in bunk beds up there. There there's so many cute things to do, Dang. and I I know you're gonna say no on the bunk beds. Dang. But um, there's so many cute things that you can do with that space that I just, it's almost like there's too many options to go one direction. I don't mm -hmm. see it and just say, here's exactly what you should do with it. Sure. I guess my closest guess would be on this, if they don't already have a home theater room of some sort or you know a giant sure. screen where they watch movies or something, it would be to do that because mm -hmm. it'd be real easy to just block the light from coming in up there. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, that That's a neat option. I didn't even think about doing that with this room. I guess my curiosity comes into play with the way that the uh, the paneling is at the ankle. I'm guessing that just blocks beams. There's, I don't think that's there for no reason whatsoever. Um, so something like this, honestly, you know, I, I like... You know, the, the, having a movie room idea, I'm always open to that. I, I always, you know, fun entertainment rooms I, I always enjoy. Um, I just don't know that my, my screen for my taste would be big enough. Sure, sure. Um, but, but, you know, kids, get them up there. 
yeah. it could work. It'd um, be a great hangout for kids. It would be. It really would be. Honestly, what I would do with a room like this, I mean, I mean, depending what the rest of your house is like, let's say the kids have their own rooms. Let's say you got a basement that they're playing in. Let's say that there's it's just like a room. It's like, what the hell do you do with it? You know, what, mm-hmm. you know, what, what, what do we do with this? It's, the kids already have plenty of spaces to play. And that just depends on their yeah. lifestyle and what they're into. Sure, you sure. Know? I know what we would do with yeah. it, but I don't know what any, yeah. anybody else and, might want to do. And I'm going to just go from the opposite end of this. And I would go with an adult uh, hangout space. Not adult themed, but just grown up. <laughs> just batting a thousand a night. Exactly. There's going to be sex swings in here and oh, all sorts God. of great no. shit. Um, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd say that on the show. No, no uh, but no. This should actually. I would go with, with more of a theme of like your office, okay. of just like this, like like just calming, kind of a sitting room. light colors, a nice like I, I give you a great chair over here that you can't really see on camera right now. But you're so jealous of my chair. It's a great chair. <laughs> it, it's it's a lovely you know old chair we found on Craigslist, old leather chair. And uh, just something where you can go and just get away is what, yeah. I'm, what I'm meeting. Just a, a grown-up, peaceful space to go to. And you can easily have a TV in there that you want to watch a TV show away from the kids. Mm-hmm. And you know, so it's... Keep it did, your wine up there. Yeah, it doesn't That'd have be to great. be like just, you know, completely non-sensory or anything of that sure. nature. Just, you know, what do you want to put up there that's going to be away from the kids? That's just kind of your away space your escape space just just take your 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 15 minutes away uh, to get uh serenity now <laughs> <laughs> you know th- yeah. that's what i would make i would make it a kid away space a, a kid free zone they can't go in there i'd shut the door i'd lock the door i'd have it just this is mom and dad's space and and there's nothing weird about it it's just this is our you know, peaceful space. Sure, sure. Um, so you don't go in there at your peaceful space and you find a bunch of, you know, candy wrappers in your chair or this or that. It's like, right. it's how you left it. It's There's just... Legos yeah. that you will find with They will invade. Feet. Yeah. They will invade like termites. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of times, you know, that's cute and I love it, but it's nice to have a little place that's yours. Uh-huh. And I think that that could be a neat space for it because I like the light coming in. Um, probably change the fan up I, I would certainly you know as much as I do love my paneling of Burt Reynolds style I probably would change that up or paint it lighter um it, I, I do like paneling painted I think it kind of looks ship lap e if uh, it's good paneling yeah. like real wood paneling sure. not the fake paneling. could you paint this I think you could paint this if it's the real wood paneling yeah. I would paint it sure. and leave it in place if it's not and it's the fake yeah. stuff I would take it down yeah I wouldn't clutter it up I would just go with simple chair or two, TV set, um, and just really just relaxing space. Mm-hmm. That's what I'd use the space for. Okay. So that's that'd be my idea on that one. That's funny. And then put a big swing in and... You're usually the one that says, I want to make this new cool room for the family. And I'm like, I want to make this away room where <laughs> nobody bothers me. Well, I've done all the, the cool rooms for the family now. So now I like need to move on to something else. It's true. Because I've created like an arcade. I've created a movie yeah. room and, and a, a concession. And now it's like, okay, now, now it's time for something new. Okay. So... Um, but there you go. There, there's some ideas uh, on what you could use with that room. Don't, don't, I think the biggest thing is don't feel ashamed to have a room to yourself if you can spare it. I mean, if there's like no place for the kids to play, by all means, make it a Make good, it a playroom. Make but it a playroom. If you just really don't know because you've yeah. got enough rooms and everything's got a spot, yeah. you know, maybe consider that. If they already have adequate play space, they don't need a third play space or a fourth play space. Just It's just more space for you to have to clean up after them. Yeah, it's... And just... just Keep the toys confined. Your sanity is valued. <laughs> yeah. And, and they'll value it, especially when they're older as well. Like, they, my parents didn't go crazy. Um, okay, so there you go. There's some ideas on that space. Okay, this is a, uh, an interesting one. Ideas for making a... Uh, oh, that's what we just talked about, the panel off. Uh, this is a wash basin one here. And I like this these. This is a hard one. It is a hard one, but I love these. When I see them in, in uh, antique stores, we even saw some of these... When we were shopping for houses here, we did in we in did. some places, and I was like, "Oh, is that even is that plumbed? 
<laughs> no, it's not plumbed, but... You I, could technically plumb this. Okay, full disclosure, one of the houses we looked at gave us all such a creepy vibe that we couldn't wait to get out of there. And it was full of creepy antiques. And I'm an avid antiquer, and uh, these were creepy. Creepy mm -hmm. things that... Uh, there's Something in there was just off, and we couldn't wait to get out of there. So... I don't know. These old wash basins, they kind of creep me out because it's they're old and people used them for washing themselves and there's mirrors attached to them and old mirrors creep me out. But What's the worst that have caught, could have gone on with an old wash basin? Oh, God. What do you put down your sink? Food. There's all kinds of stuff. People wash all kinds of stuff, you know. Are you thinking like bodily fluids, like after you know, Blood. like after Jethro had an accident with the axe? Yeah, out back? yeah, that kind of shit. I mean, eighteen hundreds nightmare kind of shit. His fingers so, in the anyway. Yeah. So, what I thought was maybe you know, part of me is like, I know it's got value in the shape that it is. It's in, it does. It's in good shape. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. There is a market for it. So I'm so, kind of like, yeah. if there's not sentimental attachment there, sell it. If you want to make some money, essentially, yeah. yeah. Get rid of it, upload, just off it. Because I'm not one to dismantle and take things apart yeah. just for the sake of doing it. Because I know yeah. this could sell. Somebody would want it as is, and you can make a pretty penny on it. If you're dead set against doing that and you don't want to leave it as a wash basin, the only thing I could think of to come up with was maybe see if the back spindles that hold the mirror up and the side arms where you hang a towel could mm -hmm. come off. Take the bowl out and maybe put a piece of wood there and stain it to match and make it like a table, like a side table yeah. or something. The, the thing, I just, I see that and I'm like, no, that's not one to mess with. I mean, it really isn't one to mess no. with. It's either if you're going to keep it, make it functional. Yeah. And, and and there are ways of making something like this functional. There really are. You can plumb this thing. Um, yeah, you could totally with, with turn a plumber it into like a pedestal sink. You, you probably really would need professional plumbing uh, to do it because it's not like I'm gonna go pick up the kit at Menards to do this. Mm -mm. Uh, or Lowe's or Home Depot to make this work because none of this would work with it. Um, but if you had someone who knew what they were doing with plumbing, you could probably get it done and get it plumbed. Um, so if I were to keep it, I'd really just keep it as is, mm -hmm. but get in contact with someone who could plumb this thing correctly. Um, other than that, I don't really see any uses for it that would be better than the current state of what it's in. It's one of those, I would feel guilty for doing yeah. something too. It's like, yeah, you can make it an end table. Yeah, you can make it a table. Mm -hmm. You could do this. You could put plants in it. You could do a lot of things. But I don't see any of those being an upgrade no. to what it is. Or or not something that, if that's what you want, sell it to someone who would really want to celebrate what this piece is and, and then use that money to buy another antique piece that is in... Bad condition. To do something. To like. do something like mm -hmm. that with. Um, but this is just, it's such a nice piece that if this has been in your family forever, either celebrate it, use it, get it plumbed, invest the money there to See make it See if another functional. family member may want it. Yeah. Because that's always an option. Make it functional or sell it. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I really, I, I couldn't really in my right mind have any I, I advice to rip it apart. No. And there's... I see parts and pieces to use, but mm -hmm. I just, with something like this, I don't, I don't see how that would, would be a good idea. Um, okay, so that is our uh, interesting wash basin piece. Okay, outdoor lights. This is a neat thing. These are something... I was so excited yeah. when you sent me that picture because we have a set of those in our yeah. garage. They don't have eagles on top, but... Um, they're, they're pretty much the same thing and they're just old outdoor wall, you know, lights that they're not really old. They're not really sure. special. First thing though, is those Eagles got to go. They're just too much. They're really neat. Um, you would get rid of the Eagles. I would get rid of the Eagles. You're so not American. Shut up. But I would get rid of the Eagles on these lanterns because they're just a little over the top and, and you've got to go to the 
you know, junk in with Jenny to see the pictures of what these are. They're really hard to describe. They're basically just wall lanterns. They look kind of like they, you know, could pass for old gas lanterns for people that may know what that is. Um, yeah. But take the eagles off the top and then paint them. How would you take them off the top of like just, I, just well, bend I, them off or what? No, I bet you they screw on, okay. honestly, because you know those have to come apart so you can take the lid off and everything. Sure. If not, there's ways to cut that off. But I would get those eagles off of there, even if you had to leave the base of the eagle and just cut the mm -hmm. most narrow portion. I would do that, and then I would paint it. I would probably, you know. For me, I would actually use these inside, yeah. like next to a fireplace or something. And that's where I'm going to put mine. Yeah. I would paint them. I'm going to paint mine black. You can paint them whatever. You could even make them copper. You can make them look old, mm -hmm. um, like verdigris copper. And then they have these really cool things now that are flicker flame candle bulbs mm -hmm. that you put these bulbs in and it look, they flicker like they're lit candles. They're, yeah. you know, fire. I would do that and make them look like old gas lanterns. I, I like that idea. I would do, as far as the painting, I, I, the inside, as far as the, the candle and all that goes, that's what I would do. Um, as far as the outside goes, though, I would do the copper painting and then the patina and make it look rusted out sure. and roach the shit out of these things. Um, I would, I, I don't know, the eagles? That's such a Canadian thing to say. Uh, well, it's I'm like, it's all like for eagle eagles, but these are like gargoyles on a building. They're, That's true. They're just <laughs> too much. They're tacky. You're anti-eagle. I'm not anti-eagle. you're saying? You're an anti-eagleite? Stop making this a problem. Why are you an anti-eagleite? Anyway. We're learning something new. Say, so we got to take the eagles off of there, and then you have just a, a nice basic lantern like you would see still even for sale in a store, but... Yeah. Um, I would do that because that's very, you know, the shape of the lantern is very reminiscent of a gas lantern. Sure. And I'm all about gas gas lanterns because I like all things old. So. If it wasn't insanely expensive and insanely difficult to do a gas lantern, I would totally I'm have all them. about it. But yeah. just your your, what do you even call it when you're running gas lines? Is that plumb? I mean, I, it, it's not don't. wiring. It's not. <laughs> no. It, uh, I mean, and a plumb is like you know. Uh, you know, plumber work is typically water and, and those things. I just what do you call when you run gas lines? Just running a gas line is what I've always Whatever said. that would be, it would be very difficult to do. It's ex it's expensive, it's no. difficult. Um, if you have, I mean, some homes do have, yeah. it's rare to find now, older homes. Uh -huh. um, but if you do have like a gas line that's, you are lucky enough to have one that's run directly to where you have a lantern that's already just like shot to hell, this would be a perfect thing to put in there with a gas lantern. But that's not the norm. Um, that's where I would stick with the the great invention of the uh, the plastic fake candles that look just as good. Well, and there's even light bulbs that yeah. screw in yeah. that do the same thing, and yeah. that's that's what I was talking about. Probably need to do some rewiring on this, but it's really not hard to do. No, it really not. I mean, it, it, honestly, one of those things. YouTube it. Um, look it up. If you're still not comfortable, yes, please do hire an electrician. Do not do something electric that you don't know what the hell you're doing on. But if you have a little bit of insight into it mm -hmm. maybe took a high school course or two on it um i did i knew i made a, a lamp sure so i i feel comfortable doing some basic stuff beyond that i'm no i, well, I need an electrician and some but, specialty lighting stores yeah. they either do it or they have somebody they yeah. know that will rewire just do it light safely. fixtures yeah. yeah just don't don't half-ass it and kind of like hope for the best because no. that, that's usually a recipe for burning your house down yeah but uh, I, if you get something like this, it's old, it needs some rewiring, you know, or even if you don't even know if it needs rewiring, just because it turns on doesn't mean it's good. Maybe an electrician can take a glance yeah. at it or something. And say yay or nay. You're right. Yeah. But they, they are neat pieces. I really do like them. And they're, they're perfect candidates for rusting the shit out of them, yeah. in my opinion. So that's, uh, I think we're on the same page with that, just kind of different mm -hmm. patinas, if you will. All right, well, um, that's that. Uh, we have another. On today's episode of Junkin' with Jen. I need to taste here, so. So I need to take my last mm. big swig of this one. What? Okay. That's all. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. You took a bigger swig than I did. Chunk, chunk. That was chunk. quite a chug for wine. I just took a I'm taking it in, in steps. Why'd you chug it? 
Did, did someone imply that you should chug it? You imply I should chug all the time. Did someone? So, you ready? <sighs> Let's try our other bottle of wine. This is a Pinot from Virginia Dare. That's all I'm pouring. You pour yours. Okay. I'm just gonna drink directly from the bottle, really. I'm kidding, no. I wouldn't be surprised. Nothing surprises me anymore. I know you should like technically like wash your glasses, but we don't have a wash basin in the middle of her desk. Darn, we should have just, you know. We could have done that with the- Offered uh, to buy that one. <laughs> it's like her new studio desk. It's an old wash basin from 1894. So here we go. Cheers right. again. Cheers again. Yay. We had this one last night. We too. did. Full disclosure. It's really good. And it's really good too. Yeah. Um, I've just been really impressed with both of these. Mm -hmm. um, as far as just overall a solid brand. And I'm not just saying because they're a sponsor. Um, it's kind of those things where we started talking about this. I'm like, what if we get a wine in that I'm kind of like, not hot about so like <laughs> last week's episode was not sponsored <laughs> it wasn't it was just like a random bottle of wine we had it i noticed we didn't drink a whole lot of terrible. it terrible and i won't we, say the name of it it was God. on camera so let's not go too far down that road um but the uh the bottle was on camera if you could read the, the label i don't know but we do never you care it. to describe it what essence you <sighs> caught from it um dog do yeah, I kind of did. Yeah, and that was of. before our sponsorship. It was just a random bottle. Yeah, I had it in the house from an old wine club. And maybe uh, it had. Does it? Does it go bad? Well, anything can go bad. Okay, maybe that. But it just it. got it in the mail like three weeks ago. So. Oh my god. It shouldn't have, but I, I did. I did stop that wine club. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm not going to say anything bad about uh, this specific bottle or anything. But this. This I, is good. I just thought, you know, whatever we get here, for the most part, they're going to only give us stuff they want to promote mm -hmm. that's going to be decent. So um, I, I'm not too reserved and we're not too picky. Um, and really, honestly, I've been blown away our first week here. It's, it's really fun having a wine sponsor because we drink wine on the show, obviously, regardless. We do. Um, so to have this as a little added uh, extra to, to share with you guys some tips on, uh, you know, some wines to get for the holidays or what have you. Um, I'm excited about it. And it's, it's kind of fun just to, to try some new stuff here too, because these are ones we've never tried ourselves either. But quite honestly, uh, they're great. Uh, really, I'm a big fan of the Virginia Dare stuff. And I would love to, uh, I would I'd be buying these at the store. Yeah. Once we run out of our supply that they sent us, um, it is really uh Really, really good quality wine. And I love the label with the retro I love the history. girl yeah. and everything. It's just so cool. It's just really cool. It, it, it could not have fit our show better for our first wine sponsor yeah. for being a reclaimed brand mm -hmm. that came out of, you know, the past and then uh, was, you know, brought back up into existence. It just, I, I don't, I didn't even know a wine like that existed, no. you know? It was just, I was amazed that when she sent me that uh, that email saying, we have the perfect wine for your show. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. What would that be? Does like, it taste like paint? Does Joanna what? Gaines have a brand of wine now or <laughs> no. something? But uh, no, this, it, just, it just fits perfectly. Yeah. It really is a solid brand. It's great. So uh, anyway, the Pinot, uh, very good. Uh, full bodied red, uh, if you want a little description on it. Uh, kind of peppery. I like that. I love full-bodied reds. You like full-bodied reds, right? I do now. Yeah. Yeah. You never did before, no. but you got into them. Um, but it really is a nice full-bodied red. It's just good. It's a good, and it's another nice one too, where I think it, for the most part, your non-wine drinkers will go, Ooh, that's, there's some, there's a lot of tastiness to this. Right. Cause there is a lot of fruit in it, but there's a nice depth to it as well. So it's a good safe one for holidays so anyway check it out at uh, your local liquor store it is available uh, nationwide as far as i believe okay uh next thing we got here this is the uh, cluttered kitchen and uh I, I saw this and i was just like oh my god i think they have too much going on here yeah and 
I wish so much that there was a second picture attached to this one that showed the other side of that bar. There is. I didn't put it on here, but the other side of the bar is another table. It's okay. almost restauranty. Well, I wonder, you know, maybe they have a large family and this is the closest they can do to sitting with each other. It, so it, it could be, but that's a lot of stuff. So it is. And why don't you just just for our listeners who are okay. not seeing this, describe what you're seeing. This is a very simple kitchen with honey oak cabinets. Um, you've got uppers and lowers, and then you've got a small little peninsula that juts out on one side with a couple of bar stools. Then inside that kind of L-shaped kitchen, you have another table and chairs which is actually kind of infringing on the workspace. And then on the other side of the table against a wall, you have a dresser, which I'm sure is being used as a buffet, and it's got a lot of things on it as well. There's a you know fridge towards the back of the L shape of the cabinetry, and then you know a window. It's, it's, it's a good functional kitchen. It's just got too much going on. Yeah. And if the seating is an issue to where they've got two tables because they need two tables for their size of their family, get that dresser slash buffet out of there and scoot that whole table away from the workspace. Because yeah. you know that somebody's bumping into the chairs every time they're trying to cook something on you know the stove. Yeah. It's just, there's too much there going on. Now, are they wanting to update the kitchen or are they just wanting to know how to declutter They're it? They're wanting to make the kitchen more functional and make it more appealing. That was kind of the gist of the whole email that was sent in. Less, less things in the kitchen are gonna make it more functional. Yeah. And I know that, you know, if you can get away with getting rid of the table, move it somewhere else or get rid of it because that, really shouldn't be it's not your typical eat-in kitchen this is part mm -hmm. of the functional workspace um if not like i said move the dresser and get some of the stuff that's on top of the counters maybe under control it just looks like there's so much going on it it's it's a little bit overwhelming and um to me, when I look yeah. at this thing, it, it it's it's the next step is we're going to go into hoarders. Well, uh, it's and, not and that it, bad. Well, it's just, there's just so much stuff where it's like, I can't let go. I can't move this out. Why are you not moving it out is my question. I mean, we, we have the, the, the mixer. We have at least two coffee makers up there. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on on the countertops. And there's, there is a lot of cabinet space that is there. I don't know what's in those cabinets, though. Um, I would say really prioritize what is in those cabinets and consider putting some of those things that are on the cabinets uh, or on the, uh, the countertop initially into the cabinets. Yeah. Get that freed up first. So let's start you know, more simplistic um, and identify what's on your counters, what can go, what does not, what what can go, what cannot go. And if you're out of room in your kitchen, you know, we've we've had that dilemma ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes where it's like, well, we have all these things, but what do we do with them? And quite honestly, um, we found other areas of our house sometimes that had like, you know, like a storage area with other cabinetry that was just mm -hmm. there. We put things in there. We moved things to the garage, put some shelves up. Um, you can find non-traditional places to put... Uh, kitchen appliances you can that you just kind of pull out when you need them because a lot of things you don't use every day you know mixers dehydrators um, sure. things like that unless you're mixing every day I mean you tell me what you're doing but um, things like that get it out of the kitchen when you're done with it and it will free up so much space and it's amazing how some of those just little things go a long way but there's a lot more that needs to be done in this yeah. in this image um, and I completely agree. Uh, there, there should not be a table where it is at right now. You cannot function in a kitchen and cook in any way, shape, or form. I think you can open the oven well, uh, fully, with the way that this table is laid out. Um, but if you could get some of that stuff out of there, maybe get this table into the corner, possibly? Get it more towards the corner, yeah. at least to where one of the chairs would maybe back up into the yeah. corner so that seating-wise, yeah. you're as close to the wall as comfortably possible. You could probably get there 
uh, if you can sacrifice whatever else you have over there to get it over there. Um, but you have to at some point accept the space that you have. And I mm -hmm. think that's something a lot of uh, folks need to, to realize is accept the space you have and make the best of it. Don't just try and force a bunch of shit into it. And, right. and that's where it's like, yes, you may need this many seats, but if you really don't have the room for it, well, then we may need to open up the idea of, okay, some folks eat over on the couch and some folks eat at the table over here. Or, or just, you know. I wouldn't make them eat at the couch. Well, if you don't have enough seats, I wouldn't put a, an extra kitchen table in the middle of my kitchen so they can sit down. I would figure something else Phases out. Phases of eating. <laughs> something. Okay. What I will say, um, if the table and the buffet slash dresser are gone, there is room for an island. If and, you pull those, yeah. And that could easily house some of the things that are on top of the cabinets. Um, yeah. A small island. I wouldn't go crazy big. Uh, but a small island, you know, you can make that work. The other option, depending on, you know, what their budget is, would be to get rid of the peninsula and just mm -hmm. have one whole bank of cabinets, uppers and lowers along the wall, and then do a longer island yeah. instead of having that uh, that L shape, just have basically two running rows of cabinets, one's just a long island, and that'll give you a lot more storage. Sure. That's That's maybe what I would do with the kitchen. I would say the biggest thing, you have extra storage on the opposite side, that needs to just go. Yeah. You need to find another place for it. I mean, really, this is a decent sized kitchen for storage. Mm -hmm. And someone who does have some knowledge of cooking and all mm -hmm. of that, you really shouldn't need much more than what you can store in that. Right. Like what we see in this picture. I don't really see any functional reason why you would need more cabinetry than what we have uh, seen right here. Unless you're going into like, you know, heirloom you know plates in china and stuff sure. put that somewhere else then and, well, and you don't have to put it right there in the kitchen and maybe that's what's stored in there yeah. I, you know a third option because we talked about a couple options would be yeah. when you remove that um that buffet slash dresser which mm -hmm. it has drawers so i that's why i keep saying dresser because it doesn't look like you can open a cabinet yeah. door you could put some more cabinets along that wall, yeah. some lower cabinets, and that would create a ton of storage. Yeah. And it would take up the same footprint, but if you got the table out of there, it would work um, as, you know, basically a second countertop space. Yeah. Biggest thing is that table. It just needs to go. It, it does need to go. It needs to go either in the corner or just gone. Yeah. There, there's really no way around it. And that's that, that will... If that is gone, you'll be amazed at all the space you open up. And really, honestly, you know, too, if you have a lot of people in that house and that's gone, you may be amazed how happy people are uh, of just not the frustration of trying to eat there. Like, oh, this is great. I'd rather eat over here. And there's mm -hmm. there's less, you know, frustration of, of being hit in the head with a, a spatula. As One last option. Yeah. And then I'll be done. Okay. You put in basically like a eat at counter on that long wall. Okay. And you have bar stools. Sure. And you could sit four, five, maybe even six, depending on how long you want to make that. I like that. And it's functional as a, another workspace, but then also it's a place to eat. It's like a Chipotle. It, unfortunately, it is. And then you could like make a, like a taco bar over here at some area? No, but I mean, I know that some people don't like the sitting next to each other sure. eating. They rather face each other. Yeah. But if you have a very large family and very small space, yeah. you kind of have to just focus on having a spot for people to eat. Sure. Now, I understand what you're saying. And I, I think that's a good a good compromise. If yeah. you need the space, period, and that is that is the only thing you need, um, I would go with that whole elongated bar mm -hmm. space. Not hard to do either. No, that's um, easy. That You can get a piece prefab of wood countertop and, or piece of wood. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just mount it. It's it's easy. Brackets, stools. You can find stools cheaply if you look at like a, a mass quantity home store, like an at-home or something like that. If you that. did it low enough, you could use the existing chairs. Yeah, if you lowered it down, yeah. Mm -hmm. You totally could. So there's some ideas on the cluttered kitchen. 
Yeah, that was like when I first started staging, I would see kitchens like that. It's really? Like, where do we begin? I thought when I sent this to you, it was going to make you like shake. Just no. Just being like, no. what are they doing? I've done that. I've been there, done that. Yeah. It's all good. I just I just know how you are with, with things. It like, would not like, function in my house. I would sure, be, if it was in our house, it would make you shake. I would but, be having issues. But yeah. you can help other people with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there you go. Thank you for submitting that. If you have a, uh, a space, a place you want some uh, advice on, you don't, you don't have to even give us your name. You can be like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Bill. I'm and anonymous your name, in Denver or Your whatever. name may be, may be Patricia, but you can be Bill if you want. And uh, We have some... people that change their names consistently oh yeah on their podcast and that's fine submissions so that's fine yeah uh we just need uh you know an image helps certainly so we can take a look at the space you're talking about tell us what you're wanting to do or at least a direction of where you want to go with this and we'll give you some ideas on how to get there mm -hmm. that's what this show is all about so feel free to submit that at junkinwithjenny.com Okay, last item here on today's episode, and I like these things. This is an <laughs> old candy machine. This is probably a penny machine or a dime machine or a nickel machine. I can't really tell. But um, what do you do with something like this? This would have originally stood on a, a big you know, iron pedestal stand at, in front of the grocery store mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, probably filled with gumballs or whatnot. But what do you do with something like this now when it's kind of rusty, kind of not in the greatest shape? What do you do with it? You want me to go first? You go first. Fish tank. Okay, yeah. I, I would, you need to get the glass cleaned up and you can do it. There's plenty of products out there that will get the, the lime and the rust and the, not rust, but the, uh, just really the lime. It's probably and calcium. And calcium deposits. that's, that's yeah. on there. It'll take some time. It'll probably be like a couple of days of like, cleansing this thing it's it'll be like an exorcism of your gumball machine um <laughs> but uh once you uh you know pray the calcium away um it will be nice and clear <laughs> that's good um then your issue if you're going to do a, a fish tank is making it um you know waterproof cold which, water which, sure. which which could take some work um, really, you're going to need to do a little research on that um, because these are designed to obviously flow whatever is in it out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you put some sort of a, a circle stopper into it um, that is waterproof, you measure it out correctly, get it in there, um, probably a plastic piece of some sort, mm -hmm. and then caulk it mm -hmm. um, around the outside and around the inside of that little barrel that's in there. Um, and then you have a watertight uh, seal. Then you can put a neat little, uh, you know, goldfish tank, beta tank. You know, I probably wouldn't do a whole lot in there. You, you're pretty much limited to fresh water. Um, and really, I mean, fresh water too, they do need some sort of a, uh, like a filtration system. So I, this is probably more of a goldfish tank or a beta tank than anything else, like one or two fish mats. Is there, I know we're trying to salvage mm -hmm. all the pieces, yeah. but is there any way that you could just use the base as a base and then put a different fish bowl on top? Because I think you're going to continually have problems with even a slow leakage. Uh, in theory, yes. Um, it's a matter of if, if it will sit on there correctly. Okay. Um, you know, the, your other option is just clean it up really good because a lot of the the, me the mechanisms if the mechanisms are working right use it as a candy machine again mm -hmm. uh, just fill it up with nuts fill it up with runts fill it up with m m's whatever you want um and and you could easily get this thing working again that'd be really fun but that's if it's functional mm -hmm. if some of the inside parts are so rusted out and roasted that they're not working then you're you're hopeless and you really do need to find a second purpose for it i think my my first purpose if i if it works would honestly just be to use it for a candy machine again or a nut machine or what have you um but the thing is so many of these things there's like one piece that's roached out on the mm -hmm. inside and good luck finding a new uh you know wheel Sure. That's going to make it work within any sort of realistic, you know, budget requirements. You? I honestly, when I first saw it, thought I would gut it as far as the mechanisms and, you know, all the inner workings as far as I could. And I would make it to where I could turn it into a lamp that had the light bulb within the globe. And then I would fill it with marbles. 
and the light would go through the marbles and okay. come through the sides of the candy machines. It wouldn't practically put, put out a lot of light, mm-hmm. so it wouldn't be so much a functional, I'm going to read by this lamp. It'd be like a candle almost. It'd be, you know? yeah, yeah, I mean, it's more of a conversation piece, but yeah. if you fill it with marbles, it's yeah. reminiscent of the gumballs, but yet the it light is. can go through it. I like that. So I thought that would be something kind of fun to do with it if you know that it's never going to ever function again as a candy machine because, again, like you said, if it can be a candy machine, make it Mm -hmm. a candy machine. Yeah. If not, I'm going to make it something else and I'm going to make it a lamp this time. It's something that's too cool to let go and just trash. I mean, there's there's so many possibilities with things like this. And it takes some work, takes some investment, um, but it, it's just a matter of what's going to make sense for your budget. And there there really is an option on almost every budget there is. For, for doing something like this with a little bit of creativity. So I like those things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I love the old candy machines. I had a, uh, a old gumball machine and I felt so horrible as, when I was a kid. Um, and I see my antique stores every day and it was not a commercial gumball machine. It was probably, you know, made in the mid seventies or, or so. And my mom had it in the basement and it was the little, you know, round gumballs. It was a, the, uh, uh, cast iron metal mm-hmm. gumball machine, glass globe on top. And I would always, you know, as a you know, somewhat rambunctious child, and I'd run around the basement and stuff, and I, I bumped it one day, and it, you know, it's standing up. It toppled. And, mm, <laughs> cracked the globe. Uh, no. Still my mom's attic, mm-hmm. I believe. Cracked to this day. Um, but uh, yeah, I got in trouble for that. But I was so sad because I used to like always like save like my pennies, mm-hmm. literally save my pennies uh-huh. to go get gumballs out of the machine. And uh, that'd be a great Christmas present now that I think of it. The gumball machine? Get a new top. Or find a top at an antique. I see them all the time. Uh-huh. Just the tops themselves with a new globe and then put it on there. I know that she would even never use it because it's probably in the back corner of the attic. But um but yeah, like hey, I fixed the gumball machine. Well, you can't do it now because we know twenty eight years later. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mom. You fixed it exactly. Put some whoppers in there. That worked great. <laughs> Put something good in there other than the uh, the junior hard mints. gumballs that are. You need something tiny. You know, nuts would work. I think I think junior mints would kind of clog it up. To yeah, be maybe kind of slimy or just melty. Mm-hmm. I mean, probably chocolate wouldn't work. Nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway. Did you remember a candy machine when you were a kid? I had a little plastic gumball machine that you put a penny in, you slid it over. The kid ones, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't anything special like what you broke. Yeah. It was nothing. I certainly feel like shit. Sure. 25 years later. All right. Well, there you go. That wraps up the uh, episode 13 of Junkin' with Jenny. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks to our uh, our wine supporter today. Yes. Virginia Dare. Thank you so much. New wine supporter uh, next week, hopefully, I believe. I know we have some new ones on the way. If they're here by next week, we'll have a wine supporter next week. Mm-hmm. So uh, thank you guys very much for that. Check them out at your local wine store. And thank you guys for watching another episode of Junkin' with Jenny.